Dear friends, as our peace gong calls us into our worship time together, let us gather ourselves in the spirit of Christ's yearning for grace and peace in our world and in our hearts on this second Sunday of Pentecost. And as we prepare for communion later in the service, please have your own bread and cup ready and also your peace candle, which you could light now. And let us prepare our hearts and our minds in virtual worship, apart yet together, in community with God and one another. Grace to you and peace. Welcome on this day that our God has made for us to be together. And by faith, we bring our hearts and minds to worship in gratitude for God's grace. And I invite us all to sing, God of grace and God of glory. As God's people on this holy day, let us now be in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, be with us this day in the midst of our faith and our fears. Guide us in the way of Christ's love and justice and peace. And so often, O God, we fail to speak out and to stand up for the well-being of all of your creation. And so we pray, creating us clean hearts, renew a right spirit within us, And guide us, O God, in the wisdom and the vision of this Holy One, whom you sent to reveal the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Dear friends, we have the assurance that absolutely nothing can separate us from the grace of God's love. We are forgiven and set free to begin again this brand new day. And so it is we give thanks and sing, Amen, we praise your name, O God.
Sharing the scripture from the letter to the Romans today will be Stacy, Zachary, Garrett, and Nathaniel Inman. The Apostle Paul would begin his letters to the churches with the words, Grace to you and peace. And he knew firsthand the meaning of the word grace, because before the very moment that he experienced an amazing transformation, he had been persecuting and killing Christians. And by the grace given to him, he would remind the people of the true marks of following Jesus Christ. Hear now some of the words that he wrote to the people in Rome. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love another with mutual affection, outdo in one another <clears throat> in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be arrogant in spirit and serve God. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of saints, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought what is noble in the sight of all. Love your neighbor as yourself. May God bless, bless these words to our hearing and our living. Amen. Amen. Some weeks find us in need of being comforted and loved even more. And some weeks find us in the need of protests, standing up for justice and love even more. This has been a week in need of both. And I was reading again about the hymn, Amazing Grace, and how it has been called the most comforting song in the world. And in the midst of all of the sadness of every kind, that gave me pause. As I thought about the background of the words to the song Amazing Grace and the man who wrote them. That song Amazing Grace is also, as someone once said, thick with history. And it started with a man named John Newton a white man who grew up in 18th century England and often ridiculed Christianity, and who also was infamous as the master trafficker of a slave ship in the 1700s, lost in cruelty and greed, delivering slaves from Africa to other countries with no regard for the suffering of these human beings and no regard for God. On one trip as captain of his ship, he experienced a fierce storm at sea, and he vowed that if he lived through that storm, he would dedicate his life to God. And indeed, he kept that promise. John Newton became a minister, and then later an abolitionist, and he finally came to understand, several years after becoming a minister, that slavery was a sin for which only the grace of God could possibly forgive his part in this inhumane connection. And Reverend Newton apologized for making a public statement. So many years after participating in that trade, when he said, it will always be a subject of humiliating reflection to me that I was once an active instrument in a business at which my heart now shudders. John Newton had great influence with the abolition of slavery through one of his parishioners, William Wilberforce, who helped abolish the trade of human beings in England. John Newton also wrote many hymns, and in 1770, he wrote these familiar words. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am fine, found, was blind, but now I see. As one writer said, the song is all about that love and forgiveness and grace pouring out to us from a higher power. Another person commented that this Amazing Grace song is simply amazing because it pulls us together. Another person said this week that the song goes beyond a religious hymn. It offers comfort to those who are hurting, those seeking forgiveness, also to those who are suffering in so many different ways. 
It is not only a song thick with history, it's a song that offers strength and hope to all. And yes, this past yet very present hymn is all about the relentless graciousness of the holy, who seeks us, finds us, restores us, forgives us, and loves us, and calls us to move into our future empowered by grace to live in the love of Jesus Christ, forgiven and set free to be all that we can be. Thanks be to God for the gift of amazing grace and for amazing grace, the song, which is truly a worldwide prayer of healing and hope. And so it was when, in the turmoil and time that we're experiencing in these days, I was sent this version of the song Amazing Grace that features voices from 50 different countries and languages. So, of course, I thought, let's all share the gifts of grace in this one song, in one voice, in one message, truly a worldwide prayer of healing and hope for God's grace knows no bounds, and forgiveness and love are forever ours by faith. Please add your voice to those around the world as part of the power of God's amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. What way the summit? We feel mass, hoy mi doyo.
So much has changed in our world lately. 疫情中这么多人失去生命，显明了生命的脆弱与短暂。Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. Don't wait another day. Dear friends, through the love of Jesus Christ and the grace of God, all things are possible. Indeed, thanks be to God for the amazing grace that we receive and that we give. Amen. We give grateful thanks for our faith community and the amazing grace that flows from here. As we come before God in our prayers today during the time of Holy Communion, we pray for all of those who are grieving losses in their lives: loss of life, loss of dignity, self-esteem, loss of faith or health or jobs or. Loss of what used to be normal. We pray for all of those listed on our prayer concerns, especially those who are isolated or alone in this time of distancing, and for all of our families of every configuration. And we pray today for our country and the divisiveness and evil which will be overcome by the power of love and grace. We pray for. The churches in our Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ and our Rhode Island Association, and for our partners in Haiti, and we ask today for monetary gifts for our One Egg Project there in the orphanages, as the need is so great, and we were not able to do this during our Easter season. So, giving to the church through checks or leaving money here would be fine. And we pray for the challenges to allow peace and love and the grace of Christ to inform our everyday lives. Donna Yule will now share our faith community announcements. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you are watching. Welcome, and we are so happy to have you with us today. We are a faith community that lives out our faith through all that we do. And we especially want you to know that your health, safety, and staying connected are our highest priority. I hope you've all had a good week and able to get out of the house. But always remember to keep your social distance of at least six feet and wear a mask if you go into any stores. And I still do have some extras if you need them, so please get in touch with me.、Um, we also have a very well-stocked food pantry for anyone that needs food. Please call the church and, Marie, and let Maria know that you are interested, and there will be someone here at the office to meet you at a convenient time for you. And we're also continuing our virtual coffee hour today, Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 11:30 a.m., and that is on Zoom. Kristen and I will be there for the entire time, and you can join us for as long or as short as you wish. If you didn't get the link in my weekly email, you can always email me or text me, and I will happily send it to you. It has been great to just chat with so many of you, and I hope you will be able to join us. And、um, you know me; I am not going to stop asking. So please, please send in those short, less than 10-second videos. We ask that you record either alone or with your family the message that says "Peace be with you" from. And then you state your name. You can be as creative as you would like. We will be showing a few videos each week at the end of each service all throughout the summer. And again, this is a way for us to stay connected. In my weekly emails, I am including personal prayers. Please remember to update me if there are any additions or changes. And also, please send me in right away any information on recent high school or college graduations. And don't forget, all families are invited to watch a virtual church school presented by Kristen that is multi-age. There's a link on Facebook, or you can go directly to our YouTube to view. And thank you to those that are continuing to either mail in their weekly pledge 
or give online. We are so grateful for that. And remember, even if you give online, we need you to complete a pledge card for the new year. The church hall and the office are closed to the public until the bans are lifted. Only paid staff and essential personnel are allowed in the buildings to keep the space safe. Please know that we are having many meetings and discussions before a decision is made to open the church, as there are many restrictions to opening. We will continue to update you. This weekly service is available to you in many different ways. YouTube, on a DVD, on a CD, and in print. So please get in touch with us if you know of anyone that is interested in viewing our weekly service. And we are having an annual meeting on Sunday, June 28th at 10.30 a.m. It will be a Zoom meeting, <laughs> and this will be very interesting. And you are all invited to attend. And we must have a quorum. So I will be sending you a link to register. Please watch for it in my emails. And when the annual reports are ready, they will also be in my emails, but we will also offer you an opportunity to come and pick one up if you do not have any email. This has been a really tough week for our church community as we have lost members. And in the past, we would grieve together on a Sunday worship. And boy, I wish I could say, come on down. Come to church on Sunday, but I can't. But we are strong and know that we are all grieving and we will get through it. So it is important for us to stay together virtually. Watch our YouTube services. Read my emails to get the updated information, and most important, reach out to others. Please enjoy your week. Be safe. I hope you are in good health and spirits. Blessings to all of you, and I will see you again next week. Let us consider now God's amazing grace that empowers us to be free from fears and strengthens us to hold fast to our faith. Living in the spirit of Christ's light and love, every day, as Alice Sapinski shares with us, Grace Alone.
Friends, we give thanks for the gift of God's grace alive among us this day. And we come now to the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, bringing the gifts of all that we are and all that we hope to be. Let us gather our hearts now in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. Life-giving and loving God, giver of wisdom and source of strength, we give thanks for your surrounding presence this day. Be strength and comfort for those who need you most. Be with all who are grieving and with all who yearn for your healing power. Be with those this day who need peace and patience, O God. Those who need calm or comfort, assurance and reassurance. And we're grateful and thank you, O God, for all who are caring for others in so many different and essential ways. And pray that you will give us each of us, the courage and the guidance to gracefully live into each day with hope, revealing new insights and energy and empathy to love and to serve. On this holy day, O God, may we come to our table to receive the bread and the cup as a gift of your amazing grace and empower us to remember that each one of us is a gift by your grace and called to be Christ's presence loving in word and deed and commitment. We ask now, gracious giver of life, that you will bless this cup and this bread and each of us receiving in that holy name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, we remember on that night when Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread, and giving thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this always, remembering me. And in the same manner also, Jesus took the cup. And Jesus said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is the covenant of love. Do this also, remembering me. Ministering now in Christ's name, I invite all who live and love in that holy name to share the bread and the cup. And while you are partaking, to please sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Christ. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Life-giving and loving God, we give thanks that you have nourished us at this your table, and we pray that you will continue to guide us in Christ's love through the days ahead. Amen. And let us now sing our closing hymn together, sent forth by God's blessing.
Now may we all share our words of parting. Lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth, from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts. Let peace fill our world. Let peace fill our universe. And dear friends, may the amazing grace of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit guide us to live each day in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pokój z Tobą. Peace be with you. From Kasia and Braden. Free to say mit dir. From Jim Siegfried. Pax Vobisco. Peace be with you. Peace. From Bobby and Kristen. Que la paz sea con todos de ustedes en este día. Dios les bendiga de parte de Carolina Di Piazzi y su familia. <laughs> <laughs>